Ooh, 30 x ones. Here we go in our second unit of the radicals unit. The first lesson was on transformations. This lesson's on taking the square root of a function. So in the first lesson, the radical sign was already in the function. Today's is going to be a little different where you are going to introduce the radical sign. So I'll show you what I mean. We are going to be given a function. Let's call it our favorite function ever, y equals f at x. And what you're going to do today is you're going to transform this by taking the square root of f at x. So here's the big points I need you to know for today. When we're taking the square root of a function, we are only square rooting the y values. There is no change to the x values. So when we square root a function, we are only changing the output, not the input. That's super important. Now, what numbers don't change when I take the square root of them? What number doesn't change when we square root them? Okay, think about that for a second. Well, you, I'm hoping you came up with two answers. When y is 0, because the square root of 0 is 0, and when y is equal to 1. Why is he talking about this? Those are your invariant points right there. Those are the points that won't change when we take the square root of the given function. So this is going to be one of the things that we look for right off the bat. Then I want to say, okay, what numbers can't I take the square root of? Well, we can't square root negative numbers, can we? So that's going to be important. When we're going to go and find y values that are negative, well, we can't square root those negative y values. So we'll see what we do with those. Um, those are the big things here, friends. So let's go and just do a couple questions. You're going to see that today's lesson is actually pretty straightforward. So let's start off just with a graph. This is how we usually see these questions. It's graphically. If it was an equation, you could just stick it in your graphing calculator. Okay, here's a nice upward parabola. And I'm going to say we are going to, this is y equals f of x here. We are going to transform this graph by taking the square root of this graph. Okay, I'm going to go through and I'm going to label some points on this graph. So I'm going to say this is when over here, that's when x is 4, this is minus 4. Here is 1, 2, 3, minus 1, and we'll put the vertex down there at minus 2. Okay, we're going to take the square root of this graph which I'll do in pretty blue. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is say, where are my invariant points? They are when y is equal to zero and y is equal to one. So I'm gonna to go to my graph, y is zero. Well, that's another way to say that's my x-intercepts. And then y is one, I'm just gonna go across here to where y is 1. Now, there's your four invariant points on this one. We won't always have four. Sometimes we'll have 0, sometimes 1. You know, it depends on the question. Okay, if I wanted to, what I could do as well is I could take the square roots of some other points. So it looks like up here, the way I've drawn this, right there, there's y is 4. So I'm going to go over to that y value of 4, and when I square root it, it's going to come down to 2, and it will be a new point. 
and I'll go across to the other side. And I square root, and the square root of 4 is 2. And now, friends, all I need to do is connect the points. Just like that. Anything underneath the x-axis, I'm going to ignore or cross off because those are negative y values. You can't take the square root of a negative y value. So that's what that graph is going to look like. My new domain is 4 to infinity and negative infinity to negative 4. And my new range is 0 to infinity. And notice how it includes the 0. And on the domain, how it includes the 4 and how it includes the negative 4. Okay, let's try another one here. And we're going to do this time, we're going to look at something that's a little different. Instead of a parabola, we're going to look at a piecewise function. So let's try another one. So the reason why I want to do a piecewise function is the first few years of the 30-1 diploma, they were giving parabolas when they were asking this question. But the last couple of years, these graphs have altered and they've become these piecewise functions that you're getting used to. Okay, so here's a piecewise function like that. And let's label our axes. I don't know, let's say this is over here at negative six. There's zero. Here's two, four, six, eight. And on the y scale, let's go one, two, three. And let's say that this point right here is at four. And down here, negative one, negative three. Okay, so this is the graph of f at x. What we want to do here, again, is take the square root of f at x. So what does the graph of y equal to the square root of f at x look like? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look for my invariant points, which are when y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. Because when I'm square rooting a function, I'm only square rooting the y values. And the square root of 0 is 0. So I go and really I'm looking for my x-intercepts. Then I say my other invariant point is when y is equal to 1. So I just go and label it like this here. And I go and label this one like that there. And I go and label this one like that right there. Okay, so far so good. So this one has six invariant points. Holy cow. That could be a numeric response question. Now I'm going to go and find some more points and I'm going to transform them. So if I come up and I look at this vertex up here, this is at 4. 0 comma 4. So when I square root that, that's going to become 0 comma 2. Just like that. And I could, if there were more points nicely labeled, take some more square roots. Okay, this graph is going to do something like this. Okay, it's going to have a bit of a curve to it. Like that. Bingo. Okay. Anything underneath the x-axis, I can't take the square roots of. So it's like, I can't do anything with those. So they're not part of my graph. And then I just keep going to the right. And I notice here again, that I just kind of connect my dots and follow along. And I would stop right there. This point here would be at y is the square root of three. So that's what that new graph would look like. Done. What would my new domain be? Well, domain would be including negative 6 to 2, comma, 6, positive 6 to 8. Just like that. And range, well, 0, and my new, our new highest point is at 2, right there. There's your new range. And we would have 6 invariant points. Pretty cool. Now, I want to point out the last little piece that seems to be becoming more and more important on our diploma tests. 
do you see right here, this little section, I'm drawing it in purple, where I kind of drew it above the line. And then do you notice it went underneath? And then this little section here, I drew it above. And then this little section here, I drew it above. And if we go back up to the last graph, look at it, I did the same thing right here. Above, above. And then all of a sudden, after it goes from above that invariant point, it goes to below. Okay, what's happening? Well, what's happening as you're square rooting the y values right there is look at your y values. Your y values right in that little section are between 0 and 1. Well, what happens when I take the square root of a number between 0 and 1? Well, the square root of something, say 0 0.5, actually ends up becoming something larger. The square root is 0 0.25 is 0 0.625, I believe. I'm actually pulling out my calculator. Oh, 0 0.71. If I take the square root of another thing, say 0 0.9, the square root of 0 0.9 is roughly 0 0.95. Do you see how taking the square roots of these numbers between 0 and 1 actually makes them larger? So this is really important. These little gray regions I've labeled here, so right here, right here, and right here, these are the regions where the square root of f at x is greater than or equal to the original function. I'll say that again. The, the purple regions are where the square root of f at x is greater than or equal to f at x. The reason is when I square root values between 0 and 1, those numbers become larger. So if I had to draw this question on a diploma, I would really want to try to accentuate those areas and in fact, I would probably label it like that and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Person marking my test, that's the region where the square root is bigger than or equal to the original function. So that's kind of the final piece that I want you to watch out for during today's lesson. So things again I want you to think about. When you're taking the square root of a graph, you are square rooting all of the y values, you are not touching the x values. Right back up here, we are only taking the square roots of the y values. Our invariant points are when y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. We cannot take the square roots of negative numbers. And now the last thing that I want you to think about here is where is the square root function bigger than the original function? That has seemingly been popping up on a lot of diplomas lately. It could be important to you. All right, my friends, that should do it. Go through the rest of the lesson and see how you do.